This week, Google added a new service to their hugely popular Google Maps product, and it's all about solar technology. Stay with me in this video and I'll give you the lowdown. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. Usually, when Google puts their hand to something, they don't muck about. Google has actually been working on the topic of solar technology for many years now, starting with the launch of Project Sunroof back in around 2015. That service was, and still is, only covering parts of the US, highlighted here in orange. But it allows homeowners to enter their address and get a rough estimate of the number of usable sun hours, and therefore solar generation they can expect at their location. And this takes into account shading from nearby trees and the amount of available space for solar panels on their property. From that point, it's possible to work out the estimated savings for different sizes of arrays and how they can finance the installation and even choose an installer. Finally, and what I particularly like about Project Sunroof is that it shows you the number of solar installations in each of the areas around you. Since the launch of Project Sunroof, Google has been working on a wider, more comprehensive service, and that service was launched this week in the form of a new extension to Google Maps called Solar API. Now, if you're not familiar with the term API, it stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's a software capability that web and mobile applications can link into in order to provide useful services. And Google's Solar API is specifically targeted at solar installation companies all across the world. Google's aim here is quite simply to expedite the rollout of solar technology globally, and they believe this new service will minimize the number of site visits required by remotely completing tasks that used to be done in person. Here are some of the infographics from the Solar API website. Most obviously, I guess, the satellite view of Google Maps captures everybody's roof. And this is the perfect starting point for an installer looking to prepare a quotation. In many locations, Google is able to capture all manner of roof measurements, including length, width, pitch, and orientation. From this, Google can estimate the expected level of solar generation throughout the year. And the Solar API is even able to suggest optimum panel layouts for a building. One of the features that I really like is that Google can determine the level of shading from trees in nearby buildings at every hour of the day. Now, whilst Google can do this for one building quite easily, they're also able to capture all of this data for all the buildings in a given area, and this actually allows installers to identify the best opportunities. I'll add a link to the Solar API website in the video description. Google hopes that the new service will minimize the number of site visits required, and as you can imagine, many of the tasks that used to be done in person can now be achieved remotely. And actually, Google believes that their service will increase proposal accuracy by providing data that's at least as good or even better than in-person measurements. And all of this should allow installers to provide customer proposals faster and more accurate than ever before. By the way, if you're enjoying the videos that I'm making, please can you pause for just a few seconds and click the like button. That really helps me because that single action causes the YouTube algorithm to present my content to more and more people. Thank you. Okay, let's look at the service in a bit more detail using a demonstrator that Google has put together. I'll put a link to this in the description. Unlike Project Sunroof, which was limited to certain parts of the USA, the Solar API is available in over 40 countries today, including my own country, the UK. Within the demonstrator, there are three locations available. Let's choose USA. Here we can see some properties in Florida, all surrounded by trees. The API is able to identify all of the buildings in the area, masking out everything else. The API can also determine the heights of all the buildings and the trees in the area, and here you can see those heights color-coded from blue at ground level through green, yellow, and then red at the highest treetops. And finally, the API can report on what is called flux, essentially the amount of sunlight hitting roofs expressed in terms of kilowatts and kilowatt hours, and taking into account factors like the location of the properties, the orientation and pitches of the roofs of those properties, shading on those roofs, and typical weather patterns at that location. We're able to see the level of detail the Solar API produces regarding flux here. I'm able to set the month, day, and even hour to see where and how much sunlight a particular roof is receiving. As I cycle through the months of the year, you can see the level of sunlight is highest in the summer months, as expected. 
And if I choose a particular day of the year and cycle through the hours of that day, you can see how the sun tracks across the sky and how shade affects the sunshine on the roofs. The solar API can also determine the solar generation potential for each roof on a particular building. For example, this building has three roofs, all with different orientations and pitches. You can see the largest roof has an area of 76 metres and an azimuth, that's essentially the compass bearing from north, of 268 degrees, and a pitch, or elevation, of 22 degrees. And the smaller roof has an area of 10 metres, an azimuth of 175 degrees, in other words almost south facing, and a pitch of 20 degrees. The API can even suggest how best to place panels on those roofs, depending on how many you'd like. Let's look how the API seeks to avoid shading by locating panels near the top of the roof first and away from any nearby trees. OK, let's look at a different location now, this time on the German-Austrian border in Europe. Here we have a few buildings in a generally open area. You can see that the solar API is able to identify those buildings and also calculate the dimensions including roof pitches using a height map. And as before, the API can also calculate the annual flux, solar generation, for that location. And looking into more detail on that flux, if I set the time of year to the beginning of February, we can see how the sunlight shines on the east-west roofs of the building in the centre throughout the day. And looking at this building in more detail, you can see that the solar API has identified four roofs on different orientations. An east-facing roof at an orientation of 120 degrees, a slightly larger west-facing roof at an orientation of 299 degrees, a smaller west-facing roof at the same orientation and similar pitch, and finally a small flat roof, this time facing towards the north. We can now ask the API to start placing panels onto this building. And it's interesting to see that it suggests fully populating the east-facing roof first, then the larger west roof, but choosing a different panel orientation for some reason, and then after that it starts populating the north roof before finally placing a few panels on the smaller west roof. The algorithm is likely prioritising roof areas with highest annual flux, and whilst an actual installation would likely be more symmetrical, it does give installers a lot more information than they would have otherwise. Hopefully you can see from this demonstrator just how powerful Google's Solar API is. So why is it that Google has released this API? Are they simply doing it for the good of humankind, to expedite the rollout of solar technology globally, so that we're all burning less fossil fuels? Yes, but it's likely not the primary reason. After all, Google is a publicly owned commercial organisation. They see this technology adding value to an already successful product, Google Maps. Solar is one of the fastest growing industries today, and Google believes it can add a lot of value there and derive a healthy revenue at the same time. And by healthy revenue, CNBC reports that Google expects to generate $100 million from this API in the first year. That might sound like a high figure, but you only need to look at the other APIs within the Google Maps product that are being used by many companies around the world. Uber, for example, is understood to have paid $58 million to Google in 2019 to use their mapping API in the Uber app. And that's just one company. I can see the Solar API being used in all manner of applications by many companies across the world before long. Now the API is not available in every country yet, as you can see here, and even in the countries it is available, over 40 countries so far, the coverage is still a little patchy. But I'm already planning to add the Google Solar API into the Pro edition of the Solarasma utility I've developed. This utility allows you to model various solar and battery configurations against different energy tariffs to see which configurations would work best against your own energy usage. I've recently integrated the European Commission PV GIS service into the utility, and that allows up to three solar arrays on different orientations to be specified, and I think the Google Solar API will add even more value. If you're a member of my Patreon, you can get access to the Pro Edition today and all the features including the API from Google as soon as it's available in your area. Here's the link to sign up and it's also included in the video description. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon members who have been supporting me so that I can keep making these videos. And some of those members have been extremely helpful to me as well, trialling new versions of the utility and reporting any issues. And a special shout out to two of those members, Tim Granger and Robert Fear, who have spent a fair bit of time with me and carried out a lot of detective work to make the utility what it is today. Thanks guys, I really appreciate the hours you put in. 
I think Google is doing something quite special here with the Solar API, and it should help advance the rollout of home solar across the world. And if you're looking to get solar for your own home, it might not be too long before you start seeing this service forming part of the quotations you receive. Thanks for watching.